Welcome, everyone, to the UNE St. Francis Alumni Weekend and the induction ceremony of the University of New England Athletics Hall of Fame Class of 2017. I love that this ceremony is part of Alumni Weekend. The relationships, the sense of community, the memories that are part of being part that are part of being part of a team, either varsity, club, or intramural, are the same feelings and connections that bring over 50 years of alumni back to this campus every year. Even if you don't participate in the sport as an athlete, sports play a role in creating an energy on campus. The athletes are your classmates, your roommates, your dorm mates. Competitions electrify campus and inspire pride. And this is an awesome way to kick off this weekend. As you came onto campus, you may have noticed a few new things. The commons under construction behind the library will provide students with a new place to eat, meet, gather, and study. There will be hard hat tours tomorrow afternoon so you can really see the beautiful view from that third floor. Here in the forum, the new expansion will provide space for locker rooms, training space, and office space, as well as a large event space as we expand with new sports. Hopefully you also all saw the new Hall of Fame display and retired jerseys as you came down to dinner tonight. Over the summer, we also got a brand spanking new president. Dr. James Herbert hula hooped onto campus July 1st, and he was officially inaugurated as UNE's sixth president on September 8th. He and his wife, Dr. Lynn Bransma, have been wonderful additions to the UNE family. They are truly Mainers in their hearts. Their spirit animals are a tremendous mix of night, wildcat, and nor'easter, and we are so glad that they have found their way home to the banks of the Saco. And now I would like to invite President James Herbert to the podium. Thank you, Amy. That was very kind. I appreciate it. Um, and I am loving it here. Let me tell you, my wife, Lynn, and I, and by the way, how is Joel? Is he okay? She just small. So we just got a text from our 17-year-old um, son who's home alone wanted to invite some friends over. So, uh, when, so when she escaped with her phone, it was to tell him, I don't think so. So anyway, um, it's such a pleasure to, to be here. And I want to begin by congratulating our Hall of Famers, the new additions to the Hall of Fame. Um, Richard Harley, uh, Harley, Elizabeth Warham, Kelly Paradi, Ronald Willette, and my friend Kurt Smite. So many congratulations to each of you and for all of your hard work and the sacrifices that you've made on behalf of the Nor'easter family. So to reflect on the role of athletics at UNE and the role of athletics in general, um, it's, it goes without saying, and I don't need to tell this crowd how important athletics are in terms of training people um, to the, the, the character that it builds. And I say this as the father of all of our kids who are athletes, and I myself, and I guess I would call myself an amateur, I like to run, I'm an avid runner, and I did get my black belt in karate, and I don't think UNE has a karate team yet, but we should, we should think about that. So um, uh, athletics builds incredible uh, discipline, the discipline required, the self-discipline, the grace in winning and the grace in losing that it develops. And this is something that personally I think we need a lot more of in, in our country today. And um, so I think that athletes develop that. And of course, the spirit of teamwork that's required in, in, to be an athlete. And at UNE, as I've made my way around the campus and visiting with different faculty and professional staff and students, I've been really impressed by our student athletes. I've been going, I've visited every dorm room. I've learned that if I bring several boxes of pizza and I go and I visit the, the dorms to the, the common areas that the students will come. And um, our student athletes in particular strike me as incredibly poised and articulate and they're just very, very impressive. 
Um, the uh, UNE, and the other thing is athletics and academics really do go hand in hand. We don't, at UNE, we don't view them as being two separate ends on a, on a pole or a continuum, but they really complement each other. We have data showing that our athletes are amongst our best students. They have higher test grades than our other students. They retain and they graduate at higher rates than our students, and they really are our model students all the way around. We at UNE consider the, our athletes are students first, and sure enough, we had 126 students last year earned all-conference honors. Um, we have a Northeaster's Neighbors, Pro, Northeaster's Neighbors program where our students are involved in deep civic engagement and doing service around our local communities. So they really, I, I can't say enough about the importance of athletics at UNE. We've made a big bet in athletics and we continue to grow our athletic programs. Amy mentioned the, the, uh, the extension to the, the forum here. And in addition, we are planning next year adding new athletic fields and resurfacing the big blue turf to make it um, more appropriate for rugby and football. And so we're very excited about those developments and we plan on continuing to invest even more in athletics at UNE. We are hoping next year, well, first of all, I gotta tell a little story. The, as you know, football begins officially next year. So this is the, the pre-JV season this year and then it officially varsity football season begins next year. And the pride that Nor'easters take in our athletes is, I see it across the board. I've had the occasion to go to various games, to soccer, lacrosse, field hockey, which by the way, I don't know how you guys do that, bending over your back like that, I would die. But I, I've had a chance to, to, the very first, the day that my presidency was announced, the very first thing I did is went to a women's basketball game, which was amazing. So I've had a chance to look at a lot of the sports and, and have a chance to visit. Um, and, and what you see at all of these is fellow students coming out and supporting their fellow students. You see parents, you see faculty, you see professional staff. And it was really exemplified at the first football game, the first JV game against Curry College. So I traveled down to Mass and here we were and you look across over on the other bleachers at the home team and they had maybe about, I don't know Kurt, where were there, like three dozen people maybe? Maybe three dozen people. We were packed. We had about, I'd guess, at least 300 people, uh, Nor'easters fans, um, parents, faculty, everybody cheering on the team. And even though we came up just short in that game, the, the, the enthusiasm and the pride that people took was not diminished at, at all. And so I have to say it made me very, very proud. And I've seen that same level of commitment and pride in all of our athletic teams. The, um, so I really, all I can say is that we recognize at UNE the importance of athletics. I'm very, very proud to be, uh, have the, the, be at the helm of such an amazing university where athletics are so, so deeply ingrained in our DNA and what, all that we do. And I really appreciate all the work that all of you do to support our athletic programs and I want to really congratulate our new Hall of Fame members. So with that, I'm going to turn it back over to Amy. Thank you. And now we will begin our ceremony. Um, just a quick public service announcement for honorees. Um, when you are announced, uh, please come up and give your remarks, and then you will have a photo taken down by um, the step and repeat by a photographer. Uh, but at this time, I'd like to invite uh, men's hockey uh, head coach, Kevin Swallow. Oh, there you are. Good evening, everyone, and uh, thank you for joining us uh, for this special event. This evening's first inductee is Rich Hurleyhe, St. Francis class of uh, 1978. Uh, Rich is one of the most accomplished multi-sport athletes in Red Knights history. He played four years of ice hockey, four years of baseball, and competed in cross country for one season. A three-time NAIA athletics first team all-star in ice hockey, he competed in two NAIA 
national tournaments, one in Minnesota, one in Wisconsin. Rich totaled 95 goals and 81 assists over his four-year hockey career and was voted Team Most Valuable Player in 1978. Uh, he was also named Most Valuable Player of the Gordon College uh, Invitational Tournament the year before. He also led the Red Knights in goals with 30 his senior season. He was a four-year member of the baseball team where he played shortstop all four years. At this time, I'd like to ask Rich Hurley to please come forward. Thanks, Kevin, for the warm introduction. Forty years ago, I was a senior here at St. Francis College, and it's a long time ago. Um, I'd also like to thank uh, the committee for putting me first on the agenda because uh, us older folks need to get to bed earlier than <laughs> some of the younger inductees. Um, I'll be brief. It's been a long time, 40 years ago, but the memories I have of games played, road trips with my teammates, goals scored, uh, will live on forever. And many of them are so vivid in my mind. I think of bus trips where the bus broke down. I think of the blizzard of 78 game in New Hampshire. And of course, um, the two trips we made out west for the national tournament in 77 and 78, uh, memories that will live on forever. So I want to thank my teammates um, for being great teammates. Um, many of you are here tonight. I won't name you all but I appreciate your support in, in coming here. I'd also like to thank Coach Bob Riley. I don't know if I've ever thanked him before for all he did for me. Um, Bob entered St. Francis the same year I did as a student in 1974 when the varsity ho hockey program um, was introduced. Bob was only three or four years older than most of us, so he looked like another student. He got us out of many jams over the course of our four years on the ice and off the ice. <laughs> and while doing that, he kept the game fun for us and produced winning teams uh, for, for many years. And uh, for that, I thank Coach Riley. Um, I'd also like to congratulate uh, the university on the changes that have been made on campus. Um, it doesn't look like the same institution that um, I attended all those years ago. We have a football team now. We have your own ice arena. We didn't have that. Um, but some things don't change. You can still get a pizza at Alex Pizza, and Rapper Rays is still open. So. <laughs> so I'll conclude by saying thank you to the committee, all of my teammates, coaches, friends, and family. Um, I'm honored to accept uh, this award and enter the Hall of Fame. Thank you very much. Good evening. My name is Tristan Durgan. I'm the Interim Director of Sports Information here at UNE. And our next induction is the 1993 UNE Women's Volleyball Team. Under the direction of UNE Hall of Fame Head Coach Carol LaRue, the 1993 women's volleyball team recorded a 22 and 12 record on its way to the NAIA District 5 championship. After winning the district title, the team went on to the NAIA by try District 13 championship and earn a trip to the NAIA national championship held in San Diego. This marked the second time in three seasons that UNE had qualified for national tournament play. At this time, I would like to introduce members of that team and ask that those in, in attendance please come forward. Lori Additon, Joyce Bisson, Leslie Collins, please come forward. Ashley Crampton, Barbara D'Arcangelo, Maureen Ganji, Kimberly Nutter, Jill Pascarelli, Allison Reynolds, 
Amy Shaker, Assistant Coach Lori Kudaka, Assistant Coach Lori Kelly, and Head Coach Carol LaRue. Speaking on behalf of the team is Leslie Collins Constantine. So Carol's making me talk because she said I'm the oldest. <laughs> so old I need glasses, I guess. So I just wanted to say that on behalf of my team, we would like to thank the UNE uh, Varsity Hall of Fame for recognizing this team. Um, it's an honor for us tonight. Looking back as an adult and as a coach at the events that unfolded for this team during the 1993 season, it seemed that it was against many odds that we did what we did. What do you get when you take six freshmen, two sophomores, one junior, one senior, two of whom had limited volleyball experience and play a season of college volleyball? You get a bi-district championship <laughs> and a, national, uh, a, a trip to the national tournament, of course. Um, how did we do it? From what I remember, we took it one day at a time. We did it together. And in fact, our cheer um, after every huddle was together. We learned life lessons from being on this team, such as the power of unity, supporting one another through the good and the bad, and believing in ourselves when the chips were down. Being an athlete, in many ways, is a metaphor for life. I think that we are all thankful that we had an opportunity to learn these lessons with each other and with our coaches during that successful season. Um, allegedly, Carol might have um, gotten on the um, luggage carousel when we went to when we when we went to nationals. Allegedly, allegedly. Um, we have many, many funny stories um, that some probably shouldn't be spoken about, especially in front of our children. Um, but we did uh, have a pretty awesome time, and I remember that one of the quotes in a newspaper was, they asked me how, uh, like, what was, what was special and how I felt about the team, and I remember saying that they felt like my sisters. So we were pretty tight-knit, and... Uh, I think that led to our success. Um, our team was led by our fearless leader, Coach Carol LaRue, our assistant coach, Lori Kuldaka, who isn't here. Um, and we can't thank them enough for their hard work to help us become the best that we could be that year. And at this time, we're going to have Carol speak. Oh, thanks. <laughs> Allegedly. Allegedly. <laughs> Allegedly. That's important. Allegedly. Um, wow. 24 years ago, 24 years ago, and I don't know how you guys always look so young to me every time I see you. <laughs> um, what Leslie said, it's, it's really true. Not only did we have the six freshmen, two sophomores, one junior, one senior, we only had a 10-person roster to boot. We had four people from Maine, um, only one, Allison Reynolds here, who had limited experience with uh, volleyball at our high school in the, in the down east area. And then we had Laurie Addington, who's not with us tonight, who had never played in her life. And then I took on Leslie Collins uh, from soccer. I actually was the basketball coach at the same time, recruited her. And she, I talked her into volleyball, and she showed up in the gymnasium. So I, back then, we couldn't even afford to buy volleyballs for everybody. To bring your own volleyball, and she showed up in the gym with her uh, pink outdoor volleyball, dribbling it away. Took a fast break, made the best layup in the world. It was just wonderful. And then Joyce, lucked out finding Joyce Bisson here, number 15, right in behind me. Uh, she was playing at a local recreation area. And my, the number 11 shirt that's uh, hung outside uh, that has been retired, I actually went down to see Laurie Kudaka play in a tournament at the rec area, at rec center. And Joyce was playing on the other side and actually blocked her a couple times. And I said, I got to know who that is. And so here she came to UNE. We're very happy about that. 
Um, all I can say for, and the out-of-state people that came in the state of Maine and actually played for me, thank you so much. Okay. They actually came in and knew a little bit about the sport, and some were fairly accomplished. And um, it didn't hurt that we had Barbara Dark Angelo, a setter. Yes. And absolutely. Uh, that girl, I mean, we would pass the ball everywhere to be known in a gymnasium, and somehow she found a way around it, threw it up, and these outside hitters around us here would just swing at everything and make it happen. And first thing I know, we're moving forward. We were the underdogs in every single tournament that we went to postseason, from the Maine Athletic Conference Championship to the district. The by tri, our lock, it turned into a tri, dry district, which is three districts combined when it used to be a by district before you go to nationals. And when we went in there, I said, not only the underdog, we're like the underdogs, underdogs. But no, hard work. These girls fought hard. They never gave up. We, we, as Leslie said, we took one day at a time, one by one. And I couldn't ask for a better team to coach. It's so responsive, respectful. I mean, they just love each other like sisters. And a lot of us stay in contact even now, which is even awesome. Ladies, you should be really proud of your accomplishments. I'm a proud of us. I'm a proud of everything you did. I've coached a lot of teams, and you know that. And I'm still here, 38 years later, still coaching, coaching tomorrow morning. And you have set a mark in my heart and my memory forever, and I'll always cherish that, those moments and times. And I know we have plenty to talk about later and plenty of stories to tell where we can tell them. So on behalf of the 1993 team, a sincere thank you to the Hall of Fame. It says here, my name is Anthony Ewing. I am the head women's basketball coach. Uh, here and tonight's next inductee is Kelly Parody, class of 2012. One of the most talented all-around players in UNE basketball's history, Kelly finished her career with 1,467 points, which is six all-time, 278 steals, second all-time, 118 block shots, second all-time, and Kelly was a three-time first-team all-conference selection. She was also the CCC Defensive Player of the Year her junior season, and the CCC Player of the Year, her senior season, when she averaged 13 points, six boards, and three steals per contest. Um, during Kelly's career, we uh, won an ECAC championship, uh, at our, my first CCC championship, and went to the NCAA tournament two times. Um, which are all great numbers and fantastic accomplishments, but what Kelly means to our program goes way, way beyond numbers. Um, it's a big night for me that Kelly is the first player of mine to be inducted into the Hall of Fame, um, which I take great pride in. Um, she was part of my first NCAA team, our first ECAC championship, um, our first 21 season, um, the first player I ever changed practice for so she could go hunting. That's a fact. <laughs> she actually forced my hand on that. Freshman year, that's who she is. Coach, first day of hunting season Saturday. Okay. For Kelly, I would do anything for Kelly, and that holds true to today. Um, just because of the kind of person she is, uh, I'm proud to call her a friend. And Kelly was the first, as we're talking about first, the first recruit I ever landed here as a coach at, at the University of New England. Um, and without Kelly, I don't think I would have had Margo, who's, sitting, who's with us today, Margo Taylor, was Russell, um, or anybody else. I'm not sure maybe we would have, but those kids came to UNE for Kelly. They heard Kelly was coming. She was a Miss Maine basketball finalist. She was kind of a big time kid. Um, and because those kids came, we were successful. And because we were successful, we, we remained successful. So Kelly, de facto, not to blow too much sunshine her way, um, I feel she's vastly successful for all the success we've had today. She's a humongous part of it. She's a huge cornerstone in our program and uh, a hugely competitive kid to this day, um, which I'm sure her family can attest to. Um, again, a fabulous person, and I'm lucky to call her a friend. And it's my distinct honor to induct Kelly Parody into the University of New England Athletics Hall of Fame. Kelly Parody. Well, I didn't trip, so that's good. <laughs> I just want to say thank you and congratulations to everyone else that's been inducted here tonight. 
Um, this is such a huge honor for me, and I would not be standing up here if it wasn't for some very special people in my life. First off, I would like to thank my parents. Um, they have always been my biggest fans. My dad, I believe, only missed one game throughout my whole career. And my mom probably missed a handful herself. I would not be um, who I am or where I am without them, without their love and support. They made it possible for me to obtain my dream of playing basketball at a great school, and I cannot thank them enough for what they have done. I would also like to thank my grandparents. They made it to every game they could, and my Nana had so much spunk in her support. One of my favorite memories is when Kurt telling, told her that she had to put her cowbell away during the game. <laughs> Next, I would like to thank my teammates. Through the four years, we laughed, we cried, and we also ran a lot. But I made lifelong memories and friends, and I would not be up here without them. Lastly, I would like to thank Coach Ewing. Thank you for always allowing me to make it to opening day of hunting season, whether I was a player or a coach. But really thank you for turning me into someone who is lazy and fat to determined to never lose. He pushed me every day to be, a better, to be better and expect better from everyone around me. He put in so many extra hours with me between classes as well as before and after practice to work on my game. And I am, very, I am forever grateful that he cared as much as I did. And for you and E, for those four years, I just recently, for those four years, and I just recently finished my accelerated nursing program, um, have been a great experience, and I wouldn't change it for the world. Although I am very jealous that I do not get to play in this new facility they have and enjoy all the new facilities that are coming today. But thank you. Good evening. Uh, my name is Rick Hayes, and I'm the head swim coach here at UNE. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce tonight's next inductee, Lizzie Wareham, class of 2012. Uh, Lizzie is the first UNE swimmer to be enshrined in the Hall of Fame. Seven times during her career, she earned all New England status at the New England Intercollegiate Swimming and Diving Association Championships. And she was the first UNE swimmer to qualify for ECAC Championships. Lizzie currently holds individual team records in the 50-yard freestyle, 100-yard freestyle, 50-yard butterfly, 100-yard butterfly, and is part of three record-holding relays, uh, the 200-yard freestyle relay, 200 medley relay, and the 400-yard medley relay. The Nor'easters posted a dual meet record of 34 and 11 during her career and placed in the top 10 at the New England Championships each year. After graduating, uh, Lizzie also served as an assistant coach for one season. Uh, at this time, I would like to ask Lizzie Wareham to please come forward. Thank you guys so much. I am pretty sure that public speaking was a required course here at UNE, and I'm not sure if it's going to help me tonight. I will be reading off of my iPhone. <laughs> Um, I really want to thank um, everyone here, but especially my boyfriend Brendan, who is also an alum and student athlete here at UNE, my friends and all of my family for coming tonight, and for all of your support throughout the years. Really, I want to thank my parents and give them credit for much of my success here. They have always supported me, especially in my swimming career. My dad is currently the high school swim coach, and I have always appreciated his feedback and tips, which helped me make me more a successful swimmer. I especially appreciate his enthusiasm for the sport and how proud he was of all of my accomplishments. My mom was also incredibly supportive as at countless swim meets and always there, my number one cheerleader and always there for me. Thank you both so much for everything and I can confidently say that tonight is as much as of a recognition of your support as it is of my swimming accomplishments. I would also like to thank Coach Roy for all of her support and hard work here throughout my four years here at UNE. Coach, would you please come join me on the stage? Thank you. 
Without Coach Roy, I wouldn't have had all the opportunities to compete in, uh, in the Division III swimming world. I remember my senior year, a group of girls had qualified for ECACs in Annapolis, Maryland, and I thought it was really silly that Coach had asked me to get the van license, just as emergency. Um, but I went along and did the hours for driving and passed the school's test. ECACs came and went and was quickly over with. With the final swim of the night, our relay team went up to the bleachers where we were all sitting as a team and we couldn't find Coach. We were then told that she had been sent to the emergency room. We quickly packed up our things and met her there as she lay asleep in the back of the seat, in the back seat of the van while I drove 14 hours back in the middle of the night. I realized she was right about insisting on me getting the van license. Being a college athlete is clearly much more than being successful in the sport itself. College athletics taught me resiliency, which means what it means to work as part of a team and how much focus it takes to complete the goal at hand. These lessons learned throughout my swimming career have allowed me to excel in my professional career, career in healthcare. Finally, I just want to thank the athletic department for this honor. UNE Swimming has given me the confidence and support that I have needed post-graduation, and I'm so grateful my, for my experience here. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Heather Davis, and I'm the Associate Director of Athletics here at UNE, and it is my pleasure to announce our next inductee, Head Cross Country Coach Ron Willette. Ron has guided our cross country program for 18 seasons. He's led both the men's and women's teams to unprecedented success. He is an eight time Commonwealth Coast Conference Coach of the Year, seven times for the women, and one time for the men. He has also led the women's team to five consecutive conference titles. Between both programs, the Nor'easters have also finished runners-up at the conference meet a total of nine times. Ron is a retired high school teacher, but still the current track coach at Bitterford High School. Ron was inducted into the Maine Sports Legends Hall of Fame just a few years ago, and it is my pleasure to introduce to you Ron Willette. generational difference. I'm going to be reading mine off paper and not my iPhone. Uh, welcome everybody. Thank you for being here. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank the nominating committee for naming me for this prestigious award. Uh, congratulations to all the other recipients getting this award this evening. As a kid growing up in Hills Beach, uh, and attending elementary school right here at Stella Maris, uh, I would have never guessed I'd be standing here this evening. I have seen firsthand UNE grow from a small liberal arts college, St. Francis College, to one of the finest universities in the Northeast. I'd like to acknowledge uh, my family that's here this evening, uh, my wife Kathy, my mom who for years worked in the DeCary cafeteria, uh, my sister, and my brother who played basketball for Mr. Beaudry. Uh, the group of people I really would like to share this award with are the kids. It's their worth, ethic, dedication, loyalty that has made the success of the cross country program possible. I am very proud of what they have accomplished. The university should be proud how these student athletes perform in the classroom and in athletic competition. They represent UNE with class and distinction. They are the true Hall of Famers. From the bottom of my heart, I thank all of them that are here and the previous teams that have set the foundation for the success of the cross country program. Thank you very much. Good evening. I'm Joan Howard, recently retired athletics administrator here at UNE, and I have the pleasure of inducting the final member of the 2017 Hall of Fame, Fame class this evening, Kurt Smythe. Kurt has been with UNE since 1997, serving in multiple head coaching capacities over the first 10 years he was here, including women's basketball, softball, and men's golf. Before he changed, shifting over to administration for his last, this past 10. Kurt has served as an assistant AD, an associate AD, 
a senior associate AD, and this fall he was promoted to the role of interim director of athletics for the third time in his career at UNE. He has been UNE's sports information director since his arrival here in 1997. As the head bas women's basketball coach from 1997 to 2007, Smythe's team won 142 games and captured UNE's first Commonwealth Coast Conference championship in 2001 to earn the program's first ever bid to the NCAA tournament. Along the way, Smythe served on the NCAA Division III Northeast Regional Ranking Committee, and from 2012 to 2016, he was a member of the NCAA Women's Basketball Rules Committee. Kurt has been active in the sports information profession over the, over the years, serving as publicity coordinator for the Commonwealth Coast Conference, the Maine Athletic Conference, the NAIA District 5, and the Maine Women's Basketball Coaches Association. Prior to UNE, he was the sports information director at his alma mater, St. Joseph's College of Maine. Smythe also coached the, the softball team at St. Joe's. Um, the squad went 30 wins and seven losses mark in 1997, and he received the MAC Coach of the Year honors at that time. These details are about his professional statistics, but they don't really describe the type of colleague and person that Kurt is. It was when I transitioned over from a coach to an administrator in 2009 that I worked side by side with Kurt on a daily basis. I enjoyed getting to know him as a colleague a confidant, and more importantly, as a friend. He's what I would call a consummate colleague because he is accomplished, he's polished, he's always positive, he's talented, he's passionate in all that he does, he's compassionate to all people around him, and yes, Kurt, I have to add that you are humble to a fault. Kurt, work, working with you made my job easier and enjoyable here at UNE, and I am thrilled to be a part of this ceremony tonight to share this well-deserved induction into the Hall of Fame with you and your family. Thank you for all you've done and you continue to do for UNE Athletics. At this time, I would like to ask Kurt to please come forward. I usually don't have much difficulty speaking in front of groups like this, but tonight could be a different story, so I apologize ahead of time if, if I'm not on my game tonight. Uh, being here since 1997, I have seen this university develop and grow at an amazing rate. When I first arrived, uh, since my arrival, we've added four colleges, a campus in Tangier, Morocco. We've more than doubled our undergraduate student population, and our total student population has raised at an ex exponential rate. There's been a lot of change here at the University of New England since I've been here, but there's been one constant. It's always been the people. Whether it's the students, the faculty, or the professional staff, the quality of the people that we have here at University of New England has always been a constant through all the change and through all the progress. And that's one of the things that makes this job so rewarding. In the hour and a half that I've allotted myself to speak this evening, I've, <laughs> I've got some people to, people to thank. I want to start with my, uh, with my family, my mother Sue, my father Bob, and my brother Jamie. I'm here this evening because of them, and not for the obvious reason. I'm here because they taught me the value of character, integrity, and a strong work ethic. Over the years, I'm sure that I've fallen short with that at times, but I've always tried to guide my actions and my decisions with those principles. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank Rick Simons and Mike McDevitt, former colleagues of mine at St. Joseph's College, where I graduated from and where I got my start as a professional. Rick was the director of athletics long time at St. Joe's, and I was fortunate. I worked with him as a student, as a manager of the basketball team. After graduation, Rick, in his role as athletic director, created a position for me at St. Joe's. He got me my start in collegiate athletics, and for that, I will be always, always be indebted to him. Mike McDevitt, is a longtime women's basketball coach there. I got my coaching, uh, my start as a coach under him. I've always considered, considered him my professional mentor and a friend of mine. Those are the ones that got my start in collegiate athletics. 
I'd like to thank the three presidents who have served the university here during my tenure, President Featherman, President Ripich, and now President Herbert. They've each demonstrated an unwavering commitment to Division III athletics and have provided us with the resources and the vision to make our athletics program what it is today. I'd also like to recognize a few senior administrators, both past and present, who have assisted me along the way. Barbara Hazard, Mike Sheldon, John Tamil, and Dennis Layton. Each in their own way have provided me with guidance and support during my career. I'd also like to thank the three directors of athletics who I've worked for here at UNE, Carol LaRue, Kim Allen, and Jack McDonald. Carol, in 1997, you took a chance on a 27-year-old who had no previous head coaching experience and brought me here as the basketball coach and sports information director. You took a leap of faith, and I'm forever indebted for that. Thank you very much. Kim Allen. <laughs> Kim Allen gave me the opportunity to become an administrator. 11 years ago, I made the transition from being both a coach and a sports information director to sports information director and assistant director of athletics. Kim believed in me en enough at that time to give me that opportunity, and she also taught me the value of being a strong advocate for the athletics department. Jack, in two years, just two years here, you made an indelible mark on not only this university, but the athletics department. You've had an amazing career as an athletics administrator, and we all have learned a lot from you. Embar embarrassingly enough, I'm standing here before you this evening as the chairperson of the Hall of Fame Selection Committee. <laughs> Jack, you somehow, as usual, worked your magic behind the scenes to make me a member of this induction class with all of those who are so worthy. Thank you for that. I am so proud to have former student athletes here this evening. As Coach Willette alluded to in his remarks, it's all about the students. And to have that many student athletes come back after I've been out of coaching for so many years, I can't explain in words. I can't explain what that means to me. One drove up from North Carolina. Others have families at home that they uh, left behind tonight. So for them to be here and sharing this, I'm deeply grateful for that. Thank you. I have our colleagues, my colleagues, both former, both former and current, there are so many wonderful people that I've worked with through the years and I work with today. You hear stories at other institutions, other athletics programs, where the coaches don't get along or the coaches don't enjoy working with the staff. That has never been the case here at UNE. I've had an opportunity to work with some of the most wonderful and talented and dedicated staff members in our profession. Thank you for all the support that you've given me through the years. I look forward to all the great things that we're going to do in the future together. I'd like to end by thanking my family, my wife Julie, my son Drew, daughter Anna, and also extended family, mother-in-law and father-in-law, Dalton and Weena, and sister-in-law, Stacy. Those of us who work in college athletics and across the university, many of us are now, it's become a situation where we're almost 24 seven. Right? There are a lot of sacrifices that, that need to be made working in college athletics with a lot of nights and weekends. I'm sure there are many times when Julie has felt like a single parent. Everything that uh, I've accomplished, you guys have been a huge part of that and I'm so deeply thankful for that. I'd like to end by congratulating all the members of the class of 2017, and I'm very proud to be associated with this class. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, and congratulations to all of the Hall of Fame class of 2017. Uh, at this point, this concludes our ceremony. I would uh, encourage all of you to attend the festivities tomorrow. It's a full day of athletics, uh, alumni games, uh, varsity games. We have a football game up in Portland. Uh, so I hope you're all uh, around tomorrow. 
Um, and I would like to invite all of the awardees to um, join us here for a group photo. And thank you very much and drive safely. <laughs>